but I'm going to record it because now people know and I can't hide it. <laughs> I can't do it. Good morning beautiful people, I'm Alex and this is Ginger Head & Co, my sewing vlog. Last Saturday we went to London, me, she and Hedge Hubby and it was sort of last minute decision because I wasn't going to go but a girl deserves some fun. So we went to London to Goldhawk Road and it was a meetup organised by Sean, the wonderful Sean from Kittenish Behaviour. The social aspect of the meetup was probably for me much more important than shopping. I like shopping for fabric obviously and uh, I was enjoying myself but talking to people was the greatest thing ever. And also I'm going to use this opportunity to, to say thank you for all the comments Every single comment means a lot to me. I started the channel to kind of communicate with people, to, to connect. And it is a group of people to, to feel connected to. And I, I definitely, I have found them. <laughs> They're my people. This is my sewing tribe. The weather was absolutely marvellous. It was quite cold, but it was very sunny. I really enjoyed that. And it was even better because she went with us, uh, my fantastic mother-in-law. I didn't film a lot because for me vlogging is still a very new experience and uh, I didn't really want to stop myself from enjoying the experience, being there in the moment. And I didn't want to cause other people to have, well, to try and avoid me with my camera. But I'm pretty sure that other people are making vlogs about it as well. There were some people that I felt I knew, but I didn't really know, like Jane or Andrea. Let's go to Goldhawk Road experience. That was my first time, so I didn't really know what to expect. There were a lot of shops and I loved that. But I was slightly disappointed with the fact that they were pretty much the same. I mean, I expected huge variety, like, you know, fabric for everything. And there was loads of very glittery, sparkly, shiny, pretty fabric there. My husband's just taking me. How are you getting along? But I didn't buy a lot and I didn't buy a lot mainly because I always kind of check the relation between the price and the quality and I didn't really think that the quality was that great. I, I thought some fabric was slightly overpriced. 
well, I compare it to Birmingham, to like the rug market, all the shops in Birmingham around the rug market. They've got the same type of fabric, so dressmaking fabric, that is cheaper. So I thought, well, I didn't force myself to buy anything. I was looking for something <laughs> for, for Nancy. I really wanted to buy her something special, but sometimes I felt that the quality wasn't quite right and I don't want to make a present that is, well, not, not great quality. But I bought something and I nearly bought the fur, but what stopped me from buying the fur was, because, well, I don't need fur, I mean, it's fake fur, uh, but what stopped me was that, and it really bothered me about the shops, uh, the prices are not there, you have to go and ask. I think if you have to ask for the price, first of all, they can tell you whatever they want, and second, you've got this obligation to buy because you bothered them, and I didn't like that. Also, and that's my story about the fur, I didn't buy the fur because at first, all the furs were £25 per metre, then some of them were £35 a metre, and because uh, the, the seller saw my excitement, the, the one that I wanted was £45 per metre. So I thought, that's, I didn't like that. I just thought, I don't need the fur, so I didn't buy it. I'll show you what I bought. I got that, that's boiled wool, and I don't know if you see the colour, but the colour is really beautiful. It's kind of plumish, like, well, it's purple, but kind of plum purple with uh, some bits and bobs and uh, apparently it is wool we'll see i'll do the burn test it definitely smells a bit like wool it feels great and i knew that if um, i hadn't bought it uh, i would have regretted so that's that's the assessment that i make will i miss it will i think i should have bought the fabric and this one is one of them so I didn't really have any plans and I don't know what to do with it. I've got some patterns. I'm going to show you the patterns that I'm thinking about and I would like to make something out of it, out of this wall this season if possible. And then we went to the most marvelous shop ever and that was the last shop we went to all together. And I didn't go to, to the brew dog, to the pub, because it was getting late and uh, I had Shabby and Sue and me really. We were getting really tired and because I <laughs> lingered longer because I stayed so much in the last shop and I, I just I couldn't, couldn't leave. I thought it would be better if we just go home, but that means that I didn't really say goodbye properly to everyone, which is horrible because like Rachel, I met Rachel for the first time there. And I, you know, you've got this connection with vloggers, with some vloggers, uh, you, you think that you know them, so it was the same thing. I kind of feel that I know her, but obviously she doesn't know me. But Rachel is just, she is much better in real life than in her vlogs. And she is lovely in her vlogs, so you can imagine how lovely Rachel is. And she had her coat, her schnitchen coat, Sylvia, is it? Coat again. It's just, I was jealous. She looked amazing. The coat was amazing, but she looked gorgeous and it just suited her so well. Anyway, we went to the last shop, Meissen, this one. And everything was very expensive there, but the quality was amazing. The quality matched the price, so the quality was really high. There was a lot of suiting fabric, and if I stayed a bit longer, I would probably have to remortgage the house. But I only bought that, <laughs> French Terry. <laughs> so it's, it's nearly two meters, and I paid, paid seven pounds, and believe me, I know about French terry because I've got meters and meters and meters and meters of various French terries. This is top notch. This is great. This is the best quality you can get. It's cotton spandex. So that was a remnant and that was probably the cheapest thing in the shop. Well, the remnants were the cheapest <laughs> bits. And I'm so happy that I bought it. I have no idea what to do with it. It's got this kind of that, that is probably going to be washed and ironed and you are not going to see that, but I suppose that is why it's so cheap. I am going to use that. There is no way I'm not going to use my French terry because I'm a French terry addict. And the boiled wool, that was 19 pounds per metre and I bought three metres, so that's enough for a coat, but I don't know what coat. And I've got some patterns. At first I thought about this burda pattern, that's from January. And I really like this coat, but it's not lined and it's, it starts with size 36, which means that I would have to play a bit with the pattern, 
which means that I would probably spend a week because I'm very slow kind of redrafting the pattern and adding the lining so I don't know I like it it's an option but we'll see because that's more work for me and then contestant number two for what to do with my bold wool is from breaking the pattern this coat um, and I forgot how it's called but uh, it's a simple coat Hala Hala coat and I've got it cut out I mean the pattern I've got it cut out so it would be easy and the coat seems to be easy it's got patch pockets so no welts I find welts really difficult I'm always paranoid because you know you have to I count the stitches I'm not joking because my welt pockets are very much hit and miss and there were quite a few misses so I'm not sure but this one is very simple so I thought I thought it would be a good idea and it wouldn't take me a long time but I'm not sure if I have enough lining and I want the lining to be pretty and also I don't know if I'm going to wear a long coat a lot because I go to the gym after work and I need something that would accommodate for for that so so that would be this you know lady in a coat a lady me um, in a beautiful coat I hope with um, her legs sticking out in leggings I don't know, and, and the hood at the back because I wear my hoodies to the gym. So I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm going to get enough wear out of a long coat because with my quite active lifestyle, hectic, uh, I don't know, maybe not. I was thinking about making another Yeats because I, I do love my coat so much. But do I, do I need another one? That's, that's the point. It's like with Eden. I have fabric for two more Eden coats from Tilly and the Buttons, but do I really need that many? I already have two. So that would be four, four coats and jackets out of the same pattern. I'm, I'm not sure. Then I've got some other patterns like this Vogue. It's very easy. V8930, right? But is it really me? I don't know. And with Vogue patterns again, I would have to work a bit because Vogue patterns don't really, don't really suit me. They are not drafted for me. They are always very broomy. So then I've got something that I thought would be a challenge for me because of the silhouette. But then do I want a challenge with the fabric that I really, really like? It's Batterick B6497 and it's that. And I know that there are millions of people who love this coat. I know it's lovely, but I, I kind of like more boyish look, I think. I don't know. I, I just think it maybe it suits me better. And again, it starts with size 8, so I would have to size down, which is slightly discouraging because it means more work for me, especially with the lining and the shell of the coat. I'm sometimes paranoid that I'm going to do something that will spoil everything. And then I've got that and I don't know where I have the envelope because it's one of my vintage patterns. But it's Simplicity 1015, 1015. And the line drawings look like that. And I really like it. But I would have to do some research. I'm kind of hesitating between the Hala coat and um, the Berda one that I showed you. I need to make the decision quite quickly because I want to wear the coat. Okay, so my report was going to be super short. I loved being part of something, part of the tribe. And I absolutely loved how we invaded some shops and Shan was like the, the queen. <laughs> Every seller recognized her and I think she should get everything for free because she's bringing so many people there. I think it's enough because I'm just going to talk about nothing. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Bye! <laughs>